Good morning, Curtis. Retiring the stock market session three. How are you? Good. It's July 27th, uh, 2024. Uh, crazy market this week. Um, Tell me about it. <laughs> the Dow was up on Friday nicely, up 600. But the, the techs are kind of sliding off and a lot of the the money's going into the uh, Russell 2000, the smaller caps. Yeah. So um, this is an example of like, we're not always going to, our stocks are not always going to come in. This is what I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes our stocks are going to be down. Some of the hardest uh, things to deal with as a trader, that your positions are going to be down. And then what do you do, right? Because if your positions are down, technically either you're losing or you're, you're at best you're at a wash, and then that's why I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, dividends today, mm -hmm. and uh, also more on covered calls. Okay. Um, first of all, dividends. Um, do you have any dividend positions right now? No. I want you to get um at least one dividend position, and that doesn't mean you have to have a bunch of shares. Even uh -huh. if you get a, even if you get a few shares, um. Because why? Because I want to show you when that dividend comes in, it's like a nice little bonus. Yeah. Uh, most dividends come in every a quarter, which is every three months. Okay. Mm -hmm. Four times a year. Every three months. Write that down. Um, some dividends come in every month. I'm going to show you a stock today that the dividend comes in every month. Um, do you know any? You know any stocks that the dividend comes in every month? Can you still hear me? Do you lose me when I go to the other screen? Sorry. Can you still hear me when I go to the other screen? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you fine. When I when I switch to the other screen, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you now perfectly fine. All right. All right. Um. So uh, that just means you gotta get a, just have a few shares. Like um, we talked about a couple of dividends previously. Let me mm -hmm. mention them again. Um, one like one I like is um, is Mo. Okay. Which is Altria. Okay. Next one is a uh, PM, which is Philip Morris. Which the the those two companies are linked, right? And uh, PM is it looks like it may hit an all time high pretty soon. Okay, and these are weekly dividends. These are um, are uh, quarterly, every three months. Okay, standard. Um, mo is about uh nine per, uh, about eight percent, mm -hmm. and uh, PM's about um four almost five percent. Okay, it was five percent when the stock was like uh. PM was five percent when the stock was like a hundred, but now it's like one twelve. Okay. So as the, the stock goes higher in price, the dividend percentage comes down. Does that make sense? Yes. And if you have a dividend stock, uh, Curtis, that has a lot of volume, like these stocks, mm -hmm. what will happen is when the shares, when the share price goes down, the dividend investors will pick up more dividends. Okay. Okay. And um, that's a very good thing. It's like a, they're going to support the stock when the when the shares are down. Yeah. Because why? Because they're getting the same dividend, the same dollar amount, but they're getting at a at a at a better a better return because the percentage goes up. If you have um, let's say, can you pull up a stock right now? Sure. Is your everything is everything logged in? Yeah. Go okay. ahead. Um, pull up um, pull up mo. Okay. Give me a price for Friday. 
huh? $50.43. All right. And then what was the chain on Friday? Was it was it up? Uh it was trending up. Right, but the 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 the, the change on Friday. 50, oh, 43 plus 20 cents. It was and a uh, volume. 63 cents plus one plus point. 63 cents and then the volume. Uh the volume was seven million rounding okay, up. So nice and nice healthy volume. Now um and then and then give me a yield. Do you have the yield or the dividend percentage? Uh where would I find that? Well oh, yeah. uh, it's seven point seven seven. Uh that's correct. Seven point seven seven. Now when this stock was uh at 40 not too long ago, and actually it was at 40 when we started, I think three weeks ago. Uh-huh. Or on or about on or about. Um it was paying eight point five percent dividend. Okay. Okay. But now the shares are higher. And because the shares are higher, it's paying less percentage. It's the same dollar amount, okay? Okay. Because the shares are higher, the, the percentage is less. And that means that the shares go low. Let's say the shares get back to 40. It's going to be back at an 8.5% dividend. And that's a better deal for investors. They're going to pick up some more shares. Do you understand that, how that works? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, so uh, when you have a healthy volume dividend stock like these stocks here, yeah. You have a lot of investors that are going to do what? They're going to buy the shares when the stock dips. Why? Because you're getting their favorite dividend stock, but for less, for cheaper. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, dividends have advantage over other stocks. Okay. Is that with that dividend, um, those investors are looking at, like, that's their paycheck. We're not doing cover calls in this one. We're just getting dividends. Yes. And a lot of investors don't even do cover calls, so um, those dividend stocks, when they want to get that dividend, they think I I, say, I, I call it fat juicy dividend. They okay. want to buy more when they get more money. They want to buy more shares when it's cheaper to get that better return. Okay. Um. So, like for example, like uh, like Philip Morris. Um, can you see from where you are, um, the amount of dividend? It's like um eighty. It's like it's like a uh, eighty eight cents or a dollar. For P, uh, for Philip Morris or MO? MO. Um, so let's see what the dividends are. It would show you, it will show you on the Schwab uh, uh, yeah, screen. Yeah, dividends is 0.98. Okay, so they're paying us 98 cents, Curtis, per quarter, okay? So okay. Let's, just say, let's just say, close, let's just say $4 a year, okay? Okay. Now, it, can you divide, um, Well, uh, just think of it that way. You're getting four dollars um, per share a year, a, do a dollar per quarter. Okay. Okay. Um, now let's pull up um, PM, please. Okay. I just added that to my watch list so I can get some shares come Monday. Yeah, just get a few shares. You don't have to buy a bunch of it, but I want to show you when they come when the dividend comes in. Okay. It's a nice little. Also, um. Put your stop. Put your account to reinvest in the dividends. I think um, there's two there's two choices for dividend stocks. Okay, mm -hmm. you can either get a cash dividend or you can get reinvest in the dividend. Okay, do you know the difference? Uh, yeah, you just uh, using the compound interest for the reinvestment, and then the cash is they just giving you a check for whatever the dividends you have. You are speaking my language when you said compound interest because I'm all about that. Because if you're, if you have, um, let's say, a dollar dividend, right, and you get yeah. cash, well, you can take that that cash. Let's say you have, you know, four shares. You yeah. get four dollars for the year, right? You can take that cash and buy yourself an ice cream, right? Yeah, which is great, you know. And that cash will just build up in your account if you don't take it out. Yes. But if you reinvest those shares. And you take that four dollars and you buy not a whole share, but a percentage of a share, a part of a share. And if it's four dollars for MO, let's say the shares are 40, it would take you uh it would take you 10 years to get 
I, that that would be at ten percent. But the point is, is it would you, you're getting a part of a share every time. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when you get a part of a the share, then the next quarter, the next quarter you get to do that. You're getting the same dividend plus a a part of a a, a share more, right? Mm -hmm. Let's do let's do let's do a uh, hundred shares. Let's do just do the math for a hundred shares, okay? Okay. Just say you're getting a hundred dollars per quarter, and you're getting um. Say so you get a hundred dollars per quarter, and you're getting uh four hundred dollars per year. That's what you would get for Philip for Mo. Yeah. Okay. Right. So um, when you say compound interest, yes, because you're getting the first quarter you're getting. The standard dividend, but the next quarter you're going to get a little bit more, and then it builds up, mm -hmm. builds up. Um, let's pull up MO. Check that one. I'm sorry, PM. PM. Okay, have it pulled up. Give me a, a price for Friday and a change in the volume. Uh, price is one thirteen thirty six. The uh, change in price was uh, plus uh, one point four percent. Plus one point, yeah, plus one point four percent, and then up 0.16 cents. The volume, and then the volume, the volume is five million three hundred thousand. Five point three million, nice healthy volume. Now um, let's look at the uh, dividend yield. What do you have there? Um, we we're looking for two numbers: one, a dollar amount, and also a percentage. Yeah, the dollar amount is a dollar point three for the dividends, and the yield is four point five nine. Okay, so that indicating um, that you're getting to get a dollar thirty per share per quarter, mm -hmm. which is a which is uh, one two three, which is actually. One, two, three, which is actually uh five twenty. Looks like five dollars and twenty cents. Is that right? Um per per year, per share. So um a dollar thirty times four. Four, yeah. Yeah. So it'd be a now little bit more than five percent. Yeah. Now these shares are more expensive. So um even though you get more dividend, the percentage is less, right? Yeah, so four point five nine percent. Now with PM, um, you can expect to get some share growth over time. Like if you look at the ten year chart, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a uptick. Okay, not a lot. It's not like a Apple or Nvidia, yeah, or Netflix. It's kind of like it kind of maintains price, and it goes up just a little bit. So write okay. this down. Um, dividend stocks need to maintain price. Write that down. Yeah. Need to maintain price over the long haul. Dividends need to maintain price over the long haul. And this is really important, Curtis, because a lot of dividend stocks aren't great. And what they'll do, when the dividend pays out, the stocks will dip every a little bit every time, and then the price won't maintain. And then if you're losing 10% of dividend and you're getting 5%, I'm sorry. If you're losing ten percent on the share growth, you're getting five percent dividend. What are you really getting, right? You're losing five percent, right? Right. So, so check the ten year chart on all your dividends and all your stocks, really, but especially dividends, because the share price needs to maintain. If it's not maintaining, that's not a kind of candidate, mm -hmm. or at least it loses that check mark. Yes. Speaking of check marks, um, last uh, last session we talked about. Yep. 11 or we, we were discussing the 11 criteria yeah did you put any of your stocks up to the 11 criteria for stock selection uh i only had tesla and uh nvidia so they all should have passed well there's no dividend on tesla yeah, i was gonna yeah. ask you i was hey, gonna ask you how, go ahead no go ahead i was gonna ask you how many check marks you got so at 11, right, 11 criteria, you have like, it doesn't have a dividend. Yeah. Does it have a 10-year chart that goes up? Does it have good volume over 2 million? Check, check, check. And does it have stock splits? Check. Does it, uh, has it doubled in the last uh, five years? Check, or maybe not. 
um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, does it have a healthy share price? Not five dollars, not twenty dollars, but maybe between a hundred and two hundred dollars. Yeah. Share. So, um, if you can get around, you know, eight to ten check marks, that's mm -hmm. excellent. And that's probably a candidate because you're not going to get all eleven, not all the time. Um, but if you have like a situation, oh, and the PE, forgot that. PE is a check mark. Does it doesn't make profit, right? Yeah. So, so if you have a stock, right, and it's like no profits, no tenure charge, the stock's going down in price, you know, no stock splits, no cover call, no you know dividend. You see where it's going. Yes. Um, no matter how much you may like the company, like oh, it has a good idea. You have the cure for cancer or something like this. You know, regardless of that, it's not going to do great because um, it doesn't have the criteria. Correct. And those investors, I think, are not going to be behind. Them. I'm not going to be back to stock. So, um, in dividends, um, it's a little bit different because it's more like a quiet. You're looking. You're not looking for all these pizzazz. You're really mainly looking for, uh, it to, one maintain price, and to have a good dividend. You know, you're still going to do the criteria for the dividend stocks, but it's like, you're not going to get like. It's not going to be doubling in price, like like Nvidia could, or like uh, these other stocks could. Um, uh, AMD. Okay. It's more of a quiet move, but it's a it's about maintaining. And what what percentage is a good dividend considered? What's the threshold? I would say three percent plus. And let me explain that. A lot of times when you get a 3% dividend like Coke, here you can bring up Coca-Cola, KO. Okay. Um, give me the stats on that one. Give me, give me the Friday close, the percentage. Go ahead. Yeah, 67.05, 0.98%. No, excuse me, 0.98 up. And then up one point four eight percent volume is thirteen million five hundred. Yeah, that's correct. Thirteen million five hundred. Um, the yield is two point eight nine percent, and the dividends is point four eight five. Wonderful. Nice healthy stock. And we talked about Coke last last uh, session. Mm -hmm. And um, can you give me, I'm sorry, what is the actual, uh, did you say it's 3%? Um, for the yield? Yeah. The yield is 2.89%. Close enough? Yeah. And then um, and then the dollar amount per quarter? Uh, 0.485. So you're getting... 48.5 cents per share it doesn't sound like a lot mm -hmm. but like 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 i said it's it's what i what i say i, I it's free money okay yeah and like, like dividends i explain dividends like you fall to your bed and you get the dividend mm -hmm. um and, and if you're getting you know three percent right you get your account to a million dollars three percent is thirty thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. right and if you're at these Philip Morris here at 4.59, that's 45,000. And then on the MO, it's uh, 77,000, 78,000 per year, per million dollars. Oh, and that's okay. how I want you to think about it. Okay. Because uh, uh, when, we, when you get older, you know, 50, 60, 70, a lot of these retirees are having you know, a couple million, two, three million in their accounts. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why they don't have, they wouldn't have, uh, or like to have, some fat dividend stocks where they can live off that dividend, sixty thousand, yes. seventy thousand, six percent, seven percent, and even if it's only, even if they can only get you know, thirty thousand, like for Coca Cola, that's enough to supplement their social security, mm -hmm. so they can live off that. They're getting seventy seven thousand from from uh, MO is even better. Okay, now so how do you? Uh, I'm I'm just thinking if if and when I get to that point, like aren't you like scared the stock is going to go down if 
you got a million dollars sitting in one stock and right so collecting the so it, <clears throat> go ahead. right so there i'm not saying put it all in mo that's why i give you one two three stocks just now yeah but you can you can um, divide it up into several stocks i see but that pay what the same percent return i got you or a similar percent uh, let's do one more since you want to since you want to talk about putting all your eggs in one basket um emd pull that up okay um uh, western asset emergency yeah give me uh the price per friday volume all the good stuff um so the price is uh, $9.61, up two cents, and uh, up 0.21%. Um, the volume on that is 137000 And then the yield is 10.55%, and the dividends is 8 uh, eight cents, so it's eight point. No, it's point zero eight four five cents. Point zero eight four five. Now, um, this one, write this down. Pays per month. Pays twelve times a year. Pays per month. So you're getting eight point four five uh cents per share. Per per month. And this one pays obviously more, ten point five five percent. Now, notice you're not going to get the check mark of share prices. It's, it's so low. Okay, yes. no check mark. You're not going to get the check mark for volume. The volume is low, hundred thirty seven k. Okay, mm -hmm. but it's paying what monthly? Which which actually you said compound, which compounds better than quarterly because you're compounding it more often. Okay, mm -hmm. and it pays a higher dividend percentage. Okay, so EMD, write that down. Yep. Buy a few shares. And let's just give you another one because um, we're covering dividends. Um, the, and this one, remember, is monthly. Yep. The last one is WHF, White Horse Financial. Uh, what's the other one? W what? WHF, William Perry Frank, White Horse Financial. Give me the, give me the numbers on that. That one is uh twelve dollars nineteen cents up to twelve nineteen plus oh three and then volume volume is forty four let's just say forty four thousand and then the uh yield is twelve point six three percent and the dividends is point three eight five. Now this this one is um quarterly. You get thirty eight and a half cents per share per quarter, twelve percent okay. per year over twelve, which is the highest one we've discussed today. Mm -hmm. This is a golden nugget. But look, look at the volume. It's it's a small volume, mm -hmm. not that many shareholders. It's kind of a, a diamond in the rough. It's it's not um famous. Mm -hmm. Not that many people know about it. It's a lower share price. It's no Coca Cola. It's no Philip Morris, but it pays higher. Now you mentioned um all in one stock. No, you could put all you know in five stocks if you want. I if you're getting twelve percent, ten percent, eight percent, seven percent, your 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 average might be you know seven percent. Okay. Gotcha. And that's seven seventy thousand per million. Gotcha. Okay, I understand. You can that. live off that. You can live off that dividend. There's no there's no trading. There's no worrying about the market. There's no pulling your hair out. Okay. Yeah. So you worried guess, about the guess. market, why would you not be worried about the market? Because my next question was, at what point, what's the threshold for you to decide to get out of that stock if it goes down? Um, what I do, I uh, I have like a mental um, a mental stop on all my mm -hmm. stocks. For dividends, I have a higher threshold because you're not trading it, right? So you're just trying, like if you... If you can get behind this company, Curtis, and you look at this company, whether it's Coca Cola, yeah. White Horse Financial, and you like what they're doing, you think you know you can check 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 their you know their stats, their check, do all the check marks. Yeah. If you're behind the company, then you're gonna um, be an investor long term, 
you don't really have to trade. You don't have to trade that stock. You're just gonna and then just hold them long term. Okay. Okay. Um, when I say mental stock, like if I if if uh, I look at the stock, and um, there's a couple of things that will maybe get out, but one is like if the um, if the conditions changed in the stock, you know, mm -hmm. let's say you know they're charged with fraud, the yeah. CEO the CEO um, you know uh, is fired or quits. Okay. They they not make it. They go from PE to no PE. You see. I see. So um, you're, still, share price you're still doing your research on it, and yes, you're still yes. staying up with it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not saying ignore ignore the stock, but I'm saying um, you don't have to do this kind of trading that we're doing on these other technology stocks. No. If the share price, if the share price is sliding, you know, um, so while some people be buying shares, you can be, you know, just be real diligent and see if if you really decide that that's not. Um, a good investment anymore, then you can just sell your shares and go into a better investment. Okay. I don't see that happening with a stock like Coca-Cola, Phil Morris, because it's just, they're just so conglomerate. Mm -hmm. um, I see it more of it like um, if it comes down, just buy more shares. But there is also, there is a, there is a point where um, you don't want to um, lose your investment. And if if the, the stock is really threatened and the company is threatened, then mm -hmm. you can either you can reduce or switch to another investment. No, I get you now. Uh, but there's none of this checking at six thirty. What's in my stock? You know, am I going to sell? You know, yeah. You, you you know, I'm thinking of like a, a retiree. You know, fishing. You know, at at sixty seven years old, you're with all these dividend stocks. You know, and they check their their the newspaper. You know, whatever. Yeah. Order. Or their app, you know, every few days, it's no big deal. Got you. Okay. So you can, you can, not, so get a few shares of dividends. And then when they come in, I want you to notice. And um, you're really going to respect the dividends when, when you're, um, when your stocks are down, when the market's down, when your positions are losing money. When that dividend comes in, it's like, oh, wow, you know, it's like you earned it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, and I do, and that will, once you have a, a little percentage of dividends, maybe like 10% dividends in your account, mm -hmm. it will offset some, some of your losses. When you have losses, the dividend, dividends will offset those losses. Yes. Uh, like uh, we talked about mutual fund managers, how when you have a, a large mutual fund manager, they're going to have dividends just because they, they, they want to take advantage of those dividends. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Um, they're not going to be all in NVIDIA. They're not gonna, they, they can't afford to. They're not going to be all in technology. Yeah. Um, what I talk about portfolio is not today, but maybe in a, in a session or two in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, when I talk about how we can get like some consumables, like let's say Starbucks and uh, McDonald's, and then we can have like some technology like NVIDIA mm -hmm. and Apple. Then we can have some other like apparel like Skechers, and then Nike, Skechers is SKX, Nike is NKE, NVIDIA is NVDA, and Apple is AAPL. And then Starbucks, McDonald's, which I'm, which I, which I'm talking about, consumables. Also Coca-Cola is KO, SBUX, MCD. And then the other dividend stocks will go there, MO and PM. Those are pretty much consumables. People have to eat. They're going to smoke. And this is an example, Curtis, of, of balancing a portfolio. You're having different sectors. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're taking advantage of what the uh, professionals do, but also you're getting what? You're getting your you're getting the high Fed dividend. Yeah. You still have your cover. You still have your high cover call returns monthly. Okay. By the way, are you, are you still doing DJT? Did we talk about DJT? Uh, yeah, we talked about it before, but I'm out of all my positions after the other uh, week or the last week anyway. So you still have your um, your share growth over time, your dividends and your cover calls. So even though you're balancing your account, it doesn't mean that you're getting you're taking less money. Yeah. If you're still taking decent money, but you're also what being safe mm -hmm. and your account's balanced. Yes. Makes so two sense. questions on that. 
Um, one, uh, do you have any recommendations on alcohol stocks or, or spirit stocks, some stocks deal in, in that industry? And then the other question is, uh, on them with a balanced portfolio, what's considered good and what's considered great as far as a monthly return? If I was to take in my dividends trading, my day trading, and my long-term investment, what type of overall return on a monthly basis would would tell me that I'm doing pretty well, good to excellent? We talked about some returns monthly so far. What have we talked about? Say that one more time. We talked about some monthly returns already. What kind of what kind of numbers are we talking about? Like so, let's say for the cover calls. Yeah, um, let me five percent. Good. Uh, you said a 5% spy put. Good. So let's say we, we put 50%. At least 3%, you said, for cover calls. Let's say we put 50% of our account at cover calls, okay? Yeah. And we're getting 5%, okay? So technically, you're getting 2.5% for your whole account from that, okay? Okay. Write down 50 and write down 2.5%. 50 and... 2.5%, okay. Actually, write down 5% because you're getting 5% from, from that part of your account, okay? 5%. And give me an a, a average return for dividends. We, did, we just discussed it. Average, Doesn't matter. Average return for dividends is- uh, On these stocks seven, we just discussed. 7%. 7%, that's per year. Can you divide seven divided by 12? Divided by 12. It's uh, 0. 0.58. So 0.58% per month. Write that down. Less than a percent per month. 0.58% per month. And the, uh, the cover costs are getting you 5% per month. Yeah. And there's other share growth stocks, Nike and Skechers. And it doesn't, you don't have to have those two, but you can look on your core 10. Do we talk about a core 10? Not yet. We'll discuss that next. Um, so you put 25% to dividends, okay? Mm -hmm. You put 50% to um, cover calls, mm -hmm. and you put 25% to, uh, let's say, options and trading, okay? okay. Now, the, the options and trading are, are gonna be the one that's gonna, gonna fluctuate the most, okay? Yes. And I, I, don't, I want you to, to decide how much you're going to get, you know. I want you to see how much you can get for trading and for options. You might actually have a loss. If, you're, if your trades aren't great, you're going to have a loss. I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you. So this is the one where you want to be very careful. Like You might want to start with 10% for trading the options. Because if you're showing a loss in your trading, then you have to improve. Yes. But once you start getting consistent trading down, like I'm going to show you some ways to trade that will be easier have a successful trade. Um, and you might take less money, but it'll be easier to make a successful trade. And once you start doing that consistently, maybe you build up, build your, build yourself up to twenty five percent trading. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna put a number in here, ten percent. Okay. Yeah. It's just a guide. You can get more, you know, but um, ten percent I think would be a great goal um, for your trading, and then five percent for the cover cost. Now we already discussed, right? the 5% for the cover calls. Do you see how you can achieve that? Yes. Not too hard. Correct. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, tell me, like, if I was a novice, right? Hey, Curtis, how do you get 5% on cover calls? What do you, how do you do that? So, um, we went through the formula. I haven't gotten that down yet, but we talked about how you find a sweet spot um, with the shares. And I have it written down, but I can't regurgitate it off memory. Wonderful. But you're taking a stock that what pays high high cover call return. Yeah. You take a stock. Give me, give me, give me an example. Like Tesla. Right. You're doing the monthly cover call, right? Yeah. Um you doing 30 days out and yeah. Um it it has a high return. You find the sweet spot 
And you, once you found that, then uh, you leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, and, and if, if you're getting, like, let's say for Tesla, right? For a $100 stock, you're getting $5, you know, then that's, and, and that, that's 5%. Mm -hmm. For disagreeing to sell the shares, what? At a higher price, which is, which is essentially just basically a cover call. Right. The sweet spot is more of a, the sweet, sweet spot is more of a detail. Like, I want to tell you how to get the best trade. But we got to sort of sweet spot. You're you're getting uh, a consistent return, let's say five percent per month. You know, mm -hmm. and we do it ten times a it's year. All at, premium is what you're saying. Yes, fifty percent per year. Now yeah. we could get maybe a little more share growth uh, when the stock goes up higher, but yeah. we could also lose on the share growth. So I never count that. I just count the premium. Yeah. So today was an unusual, or this week was unusual in the sense that. The stock went down so far that I lost all my premium and then I started losing some share growth and that's when I closed that cover call out and and then sold the stock and took a small loss. Okay, that's fine. I want you to consider um, a, a number in, when you do your trade. I just want you to change one thing, okay? Okay. I want you to put a mental stop to where you can tolerate that stock and stay in it. And as long as it doesn't cross that bar, then um, you're gonna stay in that stock, you're gonna work, you're gonna get behind that cover call, and you're going to, um, you don't have, and you don't have to sell. Okay. And I say that because um, with the cover call, I wanna make it a little easier for you to uh, trade, to stay in your positions, not to get worried or, or stressed or anxious. And you're gonna have like, you're gonna have some buffers, some rules. As long as, those rules, as long as those rules are not crossed, you can stay in there for even if it's a minor correction, even if the stock comes down. Because why? Because you're thinking about in your mind doing 10 cover calls a year. Okay? Gotcha. And if you're getting 5% on Tesla and other stocks, NVIDIA, um, then you're going to be getting uh, on paper, at least if you do these stocks every month, at least for 10 times a year, you may get 50% return on your investment. Yes. And that way you can tolerate a 10%, 20%, even a 30% loss in the share price. Yeah. Because you know that you're going to be getting these premiums every yeah. month, right? So put like a mental stop. Like So Tesla um, is how much How much was Tesla on Friday? Um, it was down slightly. It was down. It was like oh, 219, I think. Uh, let me pull it up. Thank you. Yeah, 219.80. How about um, the change? The change in the volume? Uh, the change down, was down um, 4.5 cents, 45 cents, and down 20.20%. Uh, down 45 cents. Really, it's just flat. It doesn't, you know, it did all that trading and it would end up being flat. Yeah. And um, volume. The volume was 94 million. 94 million. Just imagine. Now, I want to show you something. Give me the high and low of Tesla for Friday. Yeah. High and low for the day. You have the high and low? Yeah, the high was $222.28. And then the low was 215.33. You see how that's a seven point move? Yeah. So if you were trading Tesla, you see, if you watch the Tesla Friday, you see all these peaks and valleys up yep. and down, up and down, up, up and down. down, up and down all day. Yep. So what traders are doing, the successful ones, anyways, uh, when it hits, you know, let's say you don't want to be greedy. Okay, I'm going to show you this. It's a real basic trade. Okay. Not 222, but let's say 220. You're looking at the the last few days prior. Mm -hmm. You know, if, once, once you understand the trade Tesla, you know what it can do. If it can go lower or higher, you get to feel the stock, right? Yeah. But if you can uh, sell at 220 and buy, let's not 215, that, that'll be too greedy. If you can buy at two um, seventeen and sell at two twenty, how many points is that? 
So mm, that's like three points. Three points, right? Three dollars per share. Yeah. So if you can see these ups and downs, you can see the support and resistance, the peaks and valleys, call yeah. it how you like. Um, if you can buy a 217 and sell a 220, uh, if you're shorting, you can short at 220 and, and close at 217. Same mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm. you're, what You could be trading a share. So you could be trading options. Same difference. Options, more leverage, more risk, right? Yeah. You can get a successful trade about three points here pretty easily in Tesla. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and what I'm, ta I'm doing, I'm taking, I'm taking the, write this down, take the high and low for the day. Yeah. And then to cut that in half. Okay. And when you cut that in half, you're you're looking to trade not the not the total peak of the valley, but in between. Yes. Why? Because if you're a mutual fund manager and you're trading a billion dollars, and 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 you want to get, uh, well, well, let's say let's say if it was if 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 it was Curtis yourself, yeah. And you see the high and low, the high and low is seven points, and you say I want to get seven points, you know. Mm -hmm. I was you know, I did it like ten times. I'm it's gonna do it eleven times. Yeah. And you buy two fifteen and you wanna sell two twenty two, but it, um you're gonna you're gonna have a goal to get seven points at this trade, seven dollars. Mm -hmm. But if you if you're a mutual fund manager and you're gonna trade in between these brackets, who's gonna reach their goal faster? And if the mutual fund manager wants to get three points, yeah, who's gonna reach their goal faster? Correct. Who's going to make you go faster? You or the mutual fund manager? You're trying to get seven points. They're trying to get three points. Yeah, the mutual manager. It's easier to get three points in. It's, it's, there you go. I, that's what I wanted to tell you. It's easier. Okay. Yeah. Um. So are you saying do that multiple times or you just say I want three points for the day based off of, you know, uh, what I'm trading, the amount I'm trading, and that's what I am satisfied with in a bad trading day? If you um, do this kind of trade, you're trading the highs and lows for the day. Okay. You can do you can do one trade a day. You can do okay. one trade a week. I see. Um, what I would do is focus on write this down: high chance of success. Okay. Um. Which makes me think I want to talk about Mr. Morgan today. Mm -hmm. Do we have time? Do you have time? Yes, I have time. Go ahead. Um, I want to talk about the core 10 next week, which is just to say that you want to pick 10 stocks and get stocks that you can get behind. Mm -hmm. I want you to get comfortable trading these 10 stocks so you get good at that. You want to focus, you want to focus your skills. Okay. Yes. If I told you, hey, you know, Curtis, learn these. I've learned learned these hundred stocks, you know, and then another another then, then another group of traders. Hey, learn these ten stocks. Who's going to be focused more? The ten stocks. Right. So I want you to do that. That's called your core ten, yeah, and those are the ones you're going to trade. And you don't really have to trade outside your core ten. You want to focus on those. And when you want to find a stock or switch a stock, you're going to study it for three months. I don't know. You study it for three months before you switch or before you. Um, uh, get a new stock. Now, you may already have your core 10 already in your mind of stocks you've been trading that you'd like. I do want you to put them through the, through the 11 criteria. Mm -hmm. Oh, one of the 11 criteria is can you buy the product easily? Yes. We talked about how pounds here, you cannot buy the product because why? Because it's a government contract. Let's say the government, you're not buying pounds here. Um, most of these other stocks you can buy easily. So let's talk about the uh, core ten next uh, week. I just touched on it, but mm -hmm. now let's talk about uh, Mr. Morgan. My I remember saying to myself, "You want to have the easiest, the easiest trade with the highest success, with the highest chance of success." That's really, mm -hmm. that's really what it comes down to. When you're trading for a living, um, you don't want to get a difficult trade. You don't want that. You mm -hmm. want to get the easiest, simplest trade you can make. Yes. That has a what? A higher chance of success. If you made three points in, in one trade in one day, that could be three hundred dollars on hundred shares of uh Tesla. Yes. That's all you need to do 
to 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 get your goal at ten percent for the month. Yeah, because if you make it three 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 points on Monday. Yeah. You know, if you could let's let's say you average three points. Write this down. Um, seven wins, two three losses. Average three points. Write down seven wins and three losses. That's mm-hmm. your win. That's your win loss goal. Okay. Three losses. Ideally, it's better. Ideally, it's eight and two. Sometimes you'll go ten and one. Mm-hmm. Uh, my uh, my uh, my record is eighteen trades in a row, all all wins. Gotcha. Um, you might beat my record. You beat my record. Tell me so I can I can beat your record. Oh, I, I guess that the uh, what was that was on uh, Thursday. I had uh, probably I I have to go back and look, but I had at least ten wins. But it was easy because the whole market was down, so I just bought puts. Yeah, so you know how to trade both sides. Like I said, like like mutual fund manager. You're trading both sides. You can yeah. and, and that, those hedge funds. The, the idea is that you make money regardless. Yeah, right? exactly. So um, I'm I'm smiling because it, I get cooked every time. Like I have my core stocks that I trade, and I'm pretty familiar with it. But every time I venture out to some other random stock, I get cooked, and and then I'm <laughs> back in my other stocks to try to make up what I just lost in that stock. And uh, I was I was probably good for the day, and yesterday was a perfect example. I was I was probably up like seven hundred dollars, and then I say, oh, let me go check out Tesla, and then ended up being down fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> 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 so it's just retarded of me <laughs> to do so. <laughs> you want to go to what you know, you know. Yeah. I like how Kramer comes on the TV, and he's gonna. Tell you about a new stock. And what starts buying it? And then what, what happens? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because why? Because those big music for managers are like, hey, this stock hit. It's going up. Let's sell, take a profit, walk away. Mm-hmm. And it comes back down. Mm-hmm. And then those those traders that watch Kramer are stuck in there for three months before it comes back. Yep. Exactly. So I I I think I have to get in the practice and and get this locked in into my head to see how much money that I've actually made because there are times where I've made a a, a good deal of money. You know, I'm talking twenty percent for the day, and I still go back in and then end up breaking even or making a lot less than that. You know, twenty percent. So I think that's my own issue that I gotta resolve. But um, bulls make money, bears make money, pigs don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I don't even realize that I'm being a pig. I'm just like trading it throughout the day, and I just need to like slow down and just you know be happy at that point. You know what I mean? Sometimes uh, play, with, I play with fire, really... play with fire. Eventually, you you get what burn. <laughs> Um, I'm not saying you're greedy. I would say if you, if you can see um, you can see a, a, a easy successful trade, you know you mm-hmm. can take it, right? Yeah. But if you if you have you know you know a, a, a three or four successful trades or even one trade, and you want to just call it a day, mm-hmm. if you get your three points out of Tesla, and you want to call it a day, then that could be your day. Yeah. You don't have to go back in, you know. Yeah. Um, patience, discipline, you know. But if you go back in, don't make it like a willy nilly. Make it like, oh look, it did. It's in my parameters. Got all my check marks. Yeah. I've been doing. I, it already hit two fifteen. It's going back up to two twenty. Let me yeah. let me get another three points out of this. No, I get you. And if you and if you, and if you get two points, you pull the trigger faster. Get two points. Yeah. I respect you more because now you're doing an easier trade. Yeah. Exactly. No, um, like I said, I, I'm, I'm very good with certain things. And, and for example, I, um, when I went into multiple stocks on Thursday or Wednesday, um, I had puts on all these 
And then I was doing a traveling stop and it was like half a percent. And then as I got, you know, into the money and it was positive to $300, I raised that traveling stop up to uh, 0.1 or 0.2 so that I guaranteed that I was going to profit regardless. And it worked and that I came out $1,400 ahead. Wonderful. So that'd be a successful trade. Yeah, but okay, then so, the next day I gave it back with Tesla. <laughs> uh, what was the trade? What, what was the loss of Tesla? So we know, just so I can hear, what did you do exactly? You said like you lost money. Yeah, it was just a very choppy day. So I was just missing every time I got in and ended up losing. Uh, the How many trades did you do in Tesla? I don't know, way too many, probably. Uh, probably at least 20. So I want you to lower your uh, number of trades. Let me tell you why. Okay. Mm -hmm. Write this down. Be mm -hmm. more selective. Be more selective. Yeah. Let me explain this to you. This is a different perspective, okay? Yeah. So now we're going to, you, Curtis, are a money manager, okay? Mm -hmm. In an office with a, a floor of traders, okay? And your boss, your supervisor, comes to you and says, Curtis, we had some losses last month. And um, the big boss, Mr. Morgan, is flying in from New York and is going to meet with me and you. And uh, he says, I have some losses. I have to explain that to him. What I told him is, I have this, Mr. Morgan, I know what you're thinking, but let me explain I have this trader named Curtis. <laughs> he's, he's a he's a golden boy. This guy knows how to trade. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna he uh, you I want you to watch him trade on on Monday. Come Monday morning, he's mm -hmm. gonna fly up from New York on his jet. And now you're up to bat. Now you're on 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 the now you're up. Okay, so this is what I want you to do, Curtis. This is your supervisor telling me. I just want you to trade once. Okay. Now, I, 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 if you trade twice or three times, whatever, and you lose money, I'm going to fire you. And he says, I'm not going to fire you because I don't like you. I do like you. I'm going to yeah. fire you because if you lose money, that's my ass. We're both going to be getting fired. Yeah. I want you to pick the most easiest, easiest, highest chance of success trade you can make on Monday morning. And do just that one trade, Curtis, please. We're both yeah. both our asses are on the line. Mr. Morgan's gonna be there with his with his hat yeah. and his golden tie and his and his and his ill skin boots and watching us. Watching you, actually. And watching me. I'll be I'll be there just sitting watching you. Uh and if you if you do this one trade that's successful, that's gonna save this whole company. He's gonna keep he's gonna keep he's gonna keep uh his money with us. And we're, we're good to go. Now they're playing this another quarter. <laughs> Can you do that? And you say, <laughs> Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> now, we talked a little bit about different trades. We, we, we had three sessions. Um, you tell me what kind of trade you're going to do. Just, just like, just, I'm the supervisor. Fill me in. Like, yeah. How are you going to save our company? Because we're, <laughs> I got some explaining to do. Wait, tell me the trade you're gonna do. Make me feel like I don't have to worry. Do a simple cover call. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, nice thing about a cover call is that's actually a good a good choice because now you're gonna get premium, right? Yeah. And you you really have till next month to to really see the results. Yeah. So he goes, yeah, I like that because now you're gonna get that. Um, that premium on top of whatever the stock does in yeah. that in that case, right? So um, I want you to think of all your trades like that. Okay. Your ass is on the line, okay? And you cannot just trade because you cannot afford to lose money. You cannot afford to make a bad trade. Yeah. That's how I want. All, and if you do, you're gonna be fired. Your boss will be fired, and that that building you have is gonna be replaced by. All new people by next month. You guys are gonna all put your shit in the cardboard box and walk out the front door. Mm. That's yeah. what I want you to think. 
That's what I want you to think of each every trade you do. Excellent. So lower the lower the amount you trade. Focus trade less. Increase your percentage. Mm -hmm. Write this down. Be more patient. Yes. Be more patient. Increase your your win loss ratio. The minimum win loss ratio to be a successful trader is seven out of a three. At a ten trade, you gotta have seven wins and ten losses. This is if you have your average. You yeah. trade the same size, right? Um, I'm at a fifty. No, no, I'm at. I just did it. I'm at like forty nine and a half percent win loss rate. Now, that was a lot. Any questions on that so far? No, it's good. Can we wrap up now? Sure. Absolutely. All right, for this, um, I'll send you the, the the video once we um once it comes to me. Okay. Write write uh some some notes in your journal. Can you give me uh a picture of some handwritten notes this time? Yeah, I got them all <laughs> right here. <laughs> Wonderful. Send me a picture with your camera. Yeah, so no great. So I can grade. Just, I can only grade one page or okay. two. We'll do. And uh, I feel better that you're writing in a journal that you can have for a lifetime. Yes. Um, and not just a spreadsheet or a, a, a file in your computer that who knows where that file's gonna go. Yep. All right, thank you, Curtis. Hey, thanks again. And thanks for uh, coming in a little earlier. I appreciate it.